Lombard translates into English as Longbeard. A legend states that in one battle, the goddess Freya encouraged the women to tie their hair around their faces and fight alongside the men, giving them long beards. Many people have not heard of the Lombards, but just because their culture and language have faded into obscurity does not mean these people were not crucial for Europe's development. The Lombards were a Germanic tribe who settled in Italy around 568 CE and soon took over vast swaths of the peninsula. At first, the remaining Romans welcomed the Lombards because they thought they could reinstate the Roman Empire. However, instead of supporting the Romans, they took the territory as their own. While they ruled Italy, the Lombards stopped Byzantine and Muslim expansions and occasionally assisted the Catholic Pope. They did not leave behind many written documents, and their political system was fragmented. This is actually their primary contribution to Italian history. The Lombard Kingdom's fragmentation led to the independent city-states that ruled Italy through the Middle Ages and into the modern era. Although the northern part of the Lombard Kingdom fell to Charlemagne in 774 CE, and the rest of the Lombard Kingdom fell to the Vikings in the mid-11th century, this Germanic tribe left a significant impact on European history that continues to influence Italy today. Where did the Lombards come from? There is little information on the early Lombards, especially before they arrived in Italy. Historians know that they were a nomadic Germanic tribe that probably survived off their flocks. The early mentions of the Lombards placed them on the border of modern Denmark or Scandinavia, although they were soon driven south to Poland. The most verbose ancient historian of the Lombards, Paul the Deacon, stated that the people were overcrowded and starving, so part of the tribe broke off and migrated south. The Romans kept little information on the Lombard people. Their main interest was the tribe's military skills. The Lombards reportedly were fiercer than most other Germanic groups. They even defeated the Vandals in battle. The Vandals were another Germanic group famous for sacking Rome in 455 CE, so the Lombards were a force to be reckoned with. Around 400 CE, the Lombards migrated to Gaul, which moved them into Roman territory as they tried to escape the Huns pushing into Eastern Europe and displacing many nomadic groups. By the latter half of the 5th century, they moved again, settling in Rugeland, located in modern Lower Austria. Rugeland had been the land of the Rugi tribe, which Odoacer conquered. He later went on to defeat the Roman Empire in 476 CE. Once the Rugi people were gone, the Lombard people settled in, claiming Lower Austria for themselves. From there, the Lombards were expanding their kingdom, bringing them into conflict with their neighbors, such as the Heruli tribe. They went to war in 508 CE, and the Lombards won a great victory, although it gave way to a period of internal strife. The fighting did not deter their territorial aspirations for long. Around 526 CE, the Lombards had spread their kingdom as far south as the Lower Danube, in modern-day Romania, and as far east as modern Budapest. They were in a prime trading position, serving as part of the land route between Italy and the Byzantine Empire. Emperor Justinian, one of the Byzantine Empire's most famous rulers, led the Byzantines from 527 to 565 CE. He aligned with the Lombards for safe passage through the area. One of the reasons Emperor Justinian wanted safe passage was so he could move troops into Italy to battle the Ostrogoths. The Byzantine Empire and the Ostrogoths had an alliance around the fall of Rome in 476 CE, so when Odoacer conquered Rome, the Byzantine Empire promised to give Italy to the Ostrogoths if they defeated Odoacer. Led by Theodoric the Ostrogoth, they conquered Italy in 493 CE. Theodoric ruled Italy until 526 CE, but his successors were weak. The Ostrogothic Kingdom came under attack from outside tribes and domestic opposition. Emperor Justinian wanted to take Rome back and rebuild the complete Roman Empire. Conquering Italy became one of the key focuses of his reign, even if it was unsuccessful. It took several attempts, and in 550 CE, the emperor sent a large force led by General Narsus, who took control of Italy in 554. However, Narsus was not a popular leader in Rome, so he decided he needed to solve the poverty in northern Italy caused by the years of war by inviting the Lombards to move in. The Lombards were under pressure to move before they received Narcissus' message. They had been fighting with neighboring tribes called the Gepids and the Avars and were eager for a new home. Around 568, 
the Lombard people migrated into northern Italy, but their conquest was largely unchallenged as they took over the urban areas, which were new for this nomadic tribe. Then they moved south, where they encountered the Roman oligarchy and Catholicism. At this point, the Lombards were Arian Christians. The significant difference between Arian and Catholic Christians was how they viewed Jesus. Both agreed Jesus was the Son of God. However, the Arians believed Jesus was created, making him less than God. The Catholics thought Jesus had always existed just like God, making the two equals. This disagreement caused tension between the two branches of Christianity, but the Lombards were not profoundly attached to their faith. They were usually willing to live with and work with the Catholic people without fighting over doctrinal issues, which was impressive for the time. What was the Lombard kingdom like? Most of the sources historians have that discuss the Lombards focus on their politics, meaning there is little information about Lombard culture. The few texts we have from the Lombard kingdom were written in Latin, not Lombardic. It was not a written language, so all economic and legal exchanges were recorded in Latin. Historians believe the Roman language was used by judges and nobility working in official capacities. Still, the people spoke Lombardic, although it began to fade around the 7th century. It had connections to Old High German, but because the Lombards settled in Italy, they adopted the Latin spoken around them to manage their kingdom. Much like their use of language, the Lombard kingdom's social structure changed after they settled in Italy. While they were still nomadic, each kinship group had a war chief, similar to a duke. The nobility elected the king. The king was more like a representative than a traditional European monarch, and the Lombards were most interested in adding warriors to their ranks. Once in Italy, they developed more stratification. Most Lombard people were small landholders, farmers who owned or rented their land. These people were also part of the Lombard military, and each had to provide as much equipment as he could afford. For some, it was armor, a sword, and a spear. For others, it also included a horse. The richest not only had to provide military equipment for themselves, but also for their serfs. Because most people were farmers, the Lombards did not focus on improving the towns the Romans left behind. They repaired the houses and built fortifications. Historians believe they also built churches, although these are now lost to time. The few remaining Lombard buildings are monasteries, such as Bobbio in Piacenzo and San Salvatore in Brescia. Both buildings have seen many renovations and reconstructions, so few pieces are left from the Lombards. The Lombards tended to reuse or modify Roman architecture in their buildings, but their focus on churches and monasteries suggests religion was important to them. By the time the Lombards arrived in Italy, they were Arian Christians, but historians do not have much information about their religious life before then. Historians think they followed some portion of Norse mythology and believe they should honor certain types of trees. Once in Italy, the Lombards went through another religious conversion. They entered Italy as Arian Christians, but because Catholicism now surrounded them, they gradually adopted it. They also began trading more, even creating their own coins. They did not use coins as political statements, unlike other kingdoms, but using coins helped them facilitate trade and build a domain with the power to drive Italy into the Middle Ages. What happened to the Lombard Kingdom? The Lombard Kingdom did not maintain its control over Italy for long. The first significant loss came from Emperor Charlemagne. Charlemagne and his brother Carloman I inherited the Frankish kingdom in 768 CE, but Carloman I died in 771 from natural causes, leaving Charlemagne to rule the Franks alone. At this time, the Lombard kingdom was led by King Desiderius, whom Pope Adrian feared would take over lands held by the Catholic Church. Pope Adrian asked Charlemagne to help protect the church's lands, called the Papal States, at this time, the Catholic Church did not have a personal army. They had to rely upon political leaders to help, like Charlemagne. He agreed to meet the Pope and King Desiderius to discuss the matter, which only increased tension between the three parties. In 773 CE, Charlemagne marched into Italy and began pushing the Lombards back. He laid siege to Pavia, the Lombard capital, and took it after eight months. He exiled King Desiderius to northern France and slowly integrated the northern portion of Italy into his empire. While this did not constitute all of the Lombard kingdom, it was a significant blow. Charlemagne allowed Lombard dukes who swore allegiance to keep their positions in power. 
Dukes that refused fled to the Duchy of Benevento in the south, which served as the remains of the Lombard Kingdom. Lombard Dukes ruled the Duchy until 1053. Still, the Lombard Kingdom was not destroyed. Charlemagne was careful to maintain Lombard laws and customs. He did establish a new government that fit into his empire, but the Lombard people were generally allowed to run themselves. After Charlemagne died, the northern Lombard states continued to decline under French rule, but the Duchy of Benevento was mainly left alone during this period. They grew in power and strength. Unfortunately, this soon attracted the attention of other kingdoms and wars frequent in their history. They fought with the Byzantine Empire, other Italian city-states, and even Islamic forces. Other local Lombard leaders followed similar patterns in their quest for power, and the fighting destroyed what remained of the Lombard Kingdom's unity. Frequent attacks from outside forces further reduced the Lombards' power. The cities that had once been under the Lombards' control began developing independently. These little towns became the basis for the Italian city-states later in the medieval period and continue to influence Italian culture today. However, the Lombards were not finished by the Byzantines or the Muslims. Instead, they fell to the Normans, but they did not succumb to raids. There is a story, although it may be a legend, about Norman knights who stopped in Salerno. They had made a pilgrimage to the Holy Land and were now returning home. But while there, Salerno was attacked by the Saracens, Muslim pirates. The Normans quickly ended the attack. The people of Salerno asked them to stay. Although the knights declined, they assured the people they would send their compatriots to southern Italy. Norman mercenaries moved into the region, supporting various Lombard leaders in their wars with each other. As news spread about the wealth and opportunities in the area, more Normans poured in, including Robert Gascar. He lived from around 1015 to 1085 and arrived in southern Italy in 1047. He was ambitious and soon became the most powerful Norman in the area. He was so influential that he took over Benevento in 1053. Giscar helped stabilize the region and put an end to the Lombard Kingdom. Both the Lombards and the Normans integrated with the other groups in Italy, and the Lombards ceased to be a separate culture. They may be gone, but they left such an impact that they can never be forgotten. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history? Impress your friends? and predict the future more accurately based on past events. If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Lombard Kingdom, check out our book, History of the Lombards, a captivating guide to a group of Germanic peoples who invaded Italy and ruled large areas of the Italian peninsula. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Also, grab your free Mythology Bundle ebook while it's still available. All links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.